Who are your biggest rivals in the sport then? I kind of break it up in two different levels at my age. And so one level for me is like, I look at the guys like Ben Hoffman and Sebastian Keenley and the times I've beaten them is very, very rare. So I want to, and I love to beat those guys, but I also kind of see they've got just a few years left. So while I'd love to beat them in the immediate future, I also kind of think more about like who's going to be the biggest rivalries in three or four or five years or even 10 years. And, um, and that's a different list of guys. There must be some who you hate losing to. Like for me, I, I used to hate losing to David McNamee. There was no reason for it in like an Ironman because I didn't even know him. But I just hated losing to him. And uh, I raced against him first of all in Ironman UK and he beat me. And then it went to Kona. And uh, I think the first year he kind of just overtook me on like the Queen K on the way back into town. And I had this like little rivalry that I was like building in my head. I think part of it for me was because he was a Brit as well. Rudy Vonberg. So we both went to the same school, CU. We both live in Boulder. Um, we race the same race courses a lot. Anytime I'm on the course with him, it's kind of like, and I like the guy and I'm friends with him, but it's just like, man, every time I have gotten beat by him, it just stings a little extra. It just grinds so, your gears a bit. Like you just think, God, I want to come back and have another chance. Years, man. And it's like, I got to go out and, I mean, honestly, so it's, it's extra motivation. Whenever I'm tired, I think about people like that that I want to beat. Have you raced against Lionel Sanders much then? Really, I've only ever gotten my, uh, my ass wiped on the floor by Lionel Sanders so far. <laughs> well, to be fair, I raced him several times when I was just an age grouper. So obviously he beat me by like ages at 70.3 St. George. Yeah. He won him a few times and I was an age grouper. The only other time I've raced him was my first pro race at Ironman Arizona in 2016. In the last year, have you raced him? No, only virtually up, uh, up Mount oh, right. So he's, he's another one, man, that I'm like, the guy is such a classy guy. and, and he has this energy about him that, you know, I think we all want to beat him. But it's, for me, it's actually his fans more than anything else. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I know, know what you mean. It's because of the like, fans, isn't it? What you see on, like, social media and stuff, isn't it? Like, that's yeah. what kind of, like, would make you want to, like, beat him. Because, like, he's a really nice guy, isn't he, and everything. But it's because of all the fans that, you know, big it up. Or some of the stuff, what you see him put. It just makes you want to beat that person. And one guy, when I got the uh, the Mount Lemon KOM, you know, I got a direct message. And it basically said, like, you will never be as good as the quote-unquote lion. The lion <laughs> will be you. And I'm like, what? Since when is his nickname the lion? <laughs> like... <laughs> Does anyone ever call, call you out? No, actually, it, not too much, which I'm mixed about. Like, again, I think in some ways it'd be better with this sport if we got a little bit more almost of like that UFC like press conference where like you're kind of talking smack and saying like <laughs> saying how you actually feel. Going back almost to like the Chris McCormack days where like you will talk smack. It seems like nowadays like the press conferences have gotten so friendly. It's kind of just like, you ask, oh, how are you going to do in the race? And everyone just says, like, I'm just going to do my best out there. And I'm just happy to share the course. And uh, it looks like the weather's going to be nice. Do you think part of the problem is, though, with all that, is just because the interviewers, like, the people that ask the questions, ask the boring questions. If they said, hey, Sam, so what's Lionel's biggest weakness? How do you think you can beat that? You know, it would get you saying something about him and then him saying something about you like that. And then it kind of, like, creates a bit more of a... A rivalry. Yeah, I totally think so. Like, if you want to say something and if you want to kind of chip away at someone, like, the athlete right now has to take 100% of that on themselves. And when you do that yourself, uh, a lot of the fans out there think you're kind of an ass, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah they do, yeah. Well, like, yeah, if, if, you know, we're at the press conference and they go, so, Sam, like, how are you going to how are you gonna ride faster than Joe Skipper? Like, that's a question that's going to be exciting, you know what I mean? And then I'm just answering the question, not not – talking smack for no reason yeah they already think i'm an ass anyway so it doesn't matter if i say stuff <laughs> i think some people are already changing it back like yourself and then cam worth um and sebby's often saying stuff on on the press conferences and uh andrew starkowitz too so he's a funny guy isn't he starkey he's a good one <laughs> and to cam worth winds them all up on uh, instagram doesn't he like you know the little comments what he puts and stuff like, he, uh, he, he sends me messages. He calls me a pack rat. I think I got him a little bit wound up the other day. I, uh, I called him out a little bit. And uh, I told I, I put out there that uh, in 2015, we were both age groupers at Kona, and I beat him by an hour. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I put that up on social media that, uh, that I beat him by an hour at Kona. And next thing I know, like, he commented on my thing like six times telling me the full backstory of why 
why I was able to beat him by an hour. And what do you say? Time to get a tissue and stop crying. <laughs> <laughs>